Hi everyone, my name is Mustafa Lani and my presentation is about deterministic C waves prediction from X band radar, a new algorithm, and C trial. I believe a lot of you are not familiar with waves prediction, and that's why I would like to take a step backwards and introduce you to the topic. A fundamental property of most C conditions that are relevant to ships is that sets of larger waves alternate with sets of smaller waves. In other words, smaller waves tend to group together. The duration in which these smaller waves happen are referred to as the quiescent periods. We can see here a recording of the sea elevation where we can see a period of 131 seconds when waves are below a threshold set here about half the significant wave height. Many maritime operations such as helicopter landing and cargo transfer are limited by the sea state. If the waves are too high it is too dangerous to land a helicopter or operate a crane. However, while the overall execution of these operations may take a significant amount of time, the key wave height critical subtasks that actually limit the sea state under which they can be carried out safely are short. So you have probably guessed it by now. If we can predict the occurrence of the quiescent periods, we can conduct the maritime operations safely in a sea state that would have been considered unsafe based on overall limits and statistics. This introduces the system that we call quiescent period prediction, or QPP for short. QPP has two sides. Statistical side that we call statistical quiescent estimation, or SQE for short, and a deterministic side that we call deterministic sea wave prediction, DSWP. SQE provides the statistical property, the probability distribution in particular, of the quiescent periods under the prevalent or anticipated sea conditions. It basically constitutes the operational forward planning tool because clearly one cannot rely on exploiting equation periods if they have a very low probability of happening or have durations that are too short to be useful. The deterministic side, the SWP, can predict the actual profile of the sea surface and its evolution at a location of interest. Several tens of seconds ahead should be based on nearby measurements which in turn can identify the quiescent periods before they happen. Here's an example of a QPP system on a ship communicating statistical and deterministic information to a helicopter. To give you an idea about the function of SQE, I constructed the following scenario. The waves were of mean period of 6.9 seconds and a significant height of 3.2 meters. Let's say we have two operations. The operation one, we have a small manned helicopter requiring seven second quiescent period of waves below 0.7 meter. With operation two, we have a large manned helicopter requiring 20 second quiescent period of waves below 1.7 meter. SQE can provide you with the average wait time for these required quiescent periods to occur, which are about 13 minutes for operation one and about five minutes for operation two. More details about this work can be found in this reference. Now, back to the deterministic side. DSWP aims to measure the sea surface elevation at distance, then build the prediction model promptly, then generate 
a prediction of the actual wave profile for typically one to two minutes. It is also possible to combine the built wave model with the ship model and predict the ship movement directly. So for measurements, DSWP could use wave buoys, but they are not feasible for a moving vessel application. You could use LIDARs, but they are too short range for the purpose. Satellite wave measurements, they cannot provide the required resolution or coverage. This leaves us with X-band radars as the only practical sensing technology. This is because of their scan range and most importantly, their low cost and availability on ships for navigation purposes. The prediction time available is simply set by the time taken for waves to travel from the location where they are measured to the prediction site, which could be up to two kilometers ahead of the prediction site with the radar. So all computations associated with building a wave model directly subtract from the wave propagation time and hence the predict ahead time. And therefore, they must all be completed in relatively short times. And that's why the wave model we use in DSWP is restricted to the linear wave theory. We can see the linear model here. H represents the wave height at location X and Y at time T. C represents the model spectral coefficient. And K is the wave number and omega is the angular frequency. The built wave model in turn will be used to predict the sea surface profile at a future location in time and space, referred to by the prediction zone. The relationship between the prediction zone and the prediction horizon is determined by the space-time diagrams. These diagrams are described in the reference below. However, the challenge comes from the measurements. Radar backscatter images give only partial and distorted information about the actual sea surface, mainly because of the shadowing effect of adjacent waves. And that's why multiple scans must be combined to build a rel reliable sea model. Typical navigation radars use a mechanically rotating antenna to scan 360 degrees. So the radar measurements of the sea surface have unique spatial temporal locations. They are neither set of time series nor a spatial snapshot. In fact, they are helical in time and space. Here we present a forward stepping mixed space-time technique determining the linear model coefficients from a number of scans. First, the C model is expressed in terms of pairs of real coefficients and components. So let's say we have M samples of the C surface from a single scan. At each wave number, each pair of coefficients is obtained from a single scan by solving the shown minimization task. We can see that the solution is computationally undemanding. It requires inverting a matrix of size two by two. In the second step, the coefficients from the S previous scans are corrected by their scan times and their scan locations, which account for ship movement before they are combined. With a new scan captured, we use pass output to save on calculations and update the coefficients of the model as we can see in step three. We have tested this technique on the Golden Arrow Sea Trial, which took a place of the western coast of Scotland approximately 100 kilometers west of the Isle of Mull. 
The Golden Arrow C trial was dedicated to collecting wave and vessel motion data for QPP purposes. We were interested in the large sea conditions, which are of particular interest in many maritime operations. Over 20 minutes, the prediction was compared against the readings of a high quality motion sensor mounted on the ship. The correlation results are shown here for prediction horizon up to 150 seconds. The C model here was built using 30 scans. We can see that the correlation is high and close to 0 0.9 up to 100 seconds thank you very much for listening and i will be happy to answer any of your questions and my email address is below